Hello Matrix and welcome to another video and yes it's been a while guys since I last posted got a little busy so yeah I know you guys are upon your exams right now so let us just keep this revision going so that we can end this paper too so we're still on that IEB uh, November 2020 I know you guys think this one probably is not relevant but my warning to you is please pay attention to this line of questioning because you are just going to find yourself faced with it in these trial exams so those of you who've been watching these videos I can assure you it was all worth it but those who haven't as yet I would suggest you do so otherwise let us go into question 5 we're going to do a bit of a few questions here today Okay, this is acids and bases. So question 5.1 reads, Tendai prepares a 0 0.6 decimeter cubed of a 0 0.25 mole per decimeter cubed standard solution. Hmm. Here the word standard. Of course that is concentration and that is the volume of some container. Okay. Of potassium hydroxide to titrate against a solution of hydrofluoric acid of unknown concentration the reaction is presented by the sorry is represented by the following hydrofluoric acid in solution plus uh, potassium hydroxide solution and we end up with uh, potassium fluoride uh, salt plus water as you would know products of an acid base reaction is salt and water and of course where you have a carbonate then there's an added product which is carbon dioxide okay not a an issue there so the question is what is a standard solution well once you hear that word standard all it means it's a solution with a known concentration okay so basically once you know the concentration then that becomes a standard solution so easy definition there calculate the mass of pure hydroxide sorry potassium hydroxide needed to prepare the standard solution so here we will have to do some calculations so we are going to answer this 5.1.2 here well we know that concentration is given by number of moles um, over volume okay but what do we know about number of moles concentration will be number of moles is actually mass over molar mass okay then we divide them by volume over one and then you know the mathematics over there will tell us that we will have m over m v okay so that is the concentration of course if you have a formula sheet it already gives you this so obviously here this is over one so if you cross multiply over there we know that our mass of potassium hydroxide is going to be the concentration multiplied by the molar mass multiplied by the volume okay so let us see what is the story the concentration is 0 0.25 okay into the molar mass by the way what is that potassium is what let's have a look at our periodic table potassium is 39 plus oxygen is 16 plus one for hydrogen right into the volume we're told is 0 0.6 decimeter cubed 
So let's do the calculation. So first we have our 39 plus 16 plus 1 times 0, 0,6 times 0, 0,25. So I have here 8,4 grams. Okay, that would be the answer. Okay. So, of course, you can decide where you want to give yourself a mark. I'll give you the mark here. And then the mark for this calculation of the molar mass, it was not given. And then, of course, the general substitution. And then you get the last mark. So, that's how you get those four marks. Okay. Easy stuff. Nothing serious there. Or difficult. Okay, everything is serious, but it's not that difficult. Now, the solid um, potassium hydroxide is hygroscopic, meaning it absorbs water from the atmosphere. How will this affect the actual concentration of the potassium hydroxide if the mass that you calculated in 5.1.2 is used? State increase, decrease, or remain the same? Well, the concentration will decrease, right? Right. Why? Because we know that concentration is equal to uh, mass over molar mass and volume. And then now look at this. If this is hygroscopic, it means it will draw water from the atmosphere into this mass. Already when we use this, there's already a, an increased water content. So if we increase the volume, which is on the denominator, what happens to the concentration? It decreases. So it is that relationship. So guys, find compatibility in using these equations to explain a whole lot of these dynamics that are going to be presented to you because that is just something which is based on these equations so know them very well and know them by heart by the way because if you don't then you won't be able to reason through them okay at some stage during the, the titration the concentration of potassium hydroxide in the flask was found to be 6,5 times 10 to exponent minus 3 mole per decimeter cubed okay calculate the concentration of hydronium ions at this stage, the temperature was 25 degrees Celsius. Again, this is key. So, well, once the temperature is 25, you know that water can do the so-called auto-ionization. And we use the constant of ionization of water to be able to determine uh, these things. Okay. First of all, it's just three marks, man. It's a very simple question. You don't want to complicate it, but I will complicate it a little bit. Uh, so we have 5.1.4 here. First of all, we know that KOH, okay? Going to put water onto this bridge because it's going to cause me a few difficulties if I do it otherwise. So all I know is that this is a strong base. It dissociates into potassium ions and hydroxide ions okay not a problem so of course you know that this is aqueous solution okay then of course this would have been a solid so to speak if you put it in water it dissociates into those okay now what do we know uh, maybe let's not say a solid per se could be liquid, doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, man, I'm not happy with this one. Yeah, let's say this is a solution as well. Okay, sometimes it causes a few issues to do this. Now, what do we know? We have a one-to-one -one relationship between the potassium hydroxide and the hydroxyl ion, okay? So this means the concentration of the hydroxide, I mean potassium hydroxide, will be the same as the concentration of the 
hydroxyl ions. Why? Because it is a strong base. It dissociates completely in water to give an exact amount of concentration of the hydroxide ions. So we know that, well, water ionization of water says the oxonium ion multiplied by the hydroxyl ion concentrations is a constant 1 times 10 to the minus 14 okay great stuff and this follows that our concentration of our oxonium ions is equal to 1 times 10 to exponent minus 14 divide by the concentration of the hydroxyl ions okay and that was the question so what would be the concentration we know that this concentration was given as 6,5 times 10 to exponent minus 3 and it will follow the same pattern because it dissociates completely therefore the concentration of those hydroxyl ions would be more or less the same so we have 1 times 10 to exponent minus 14 divide by what is that? 6,5 times 10 to exponent minus 3. Okay, let's get the concentration thereof. So, what is that? Okay, so what I get is 1, 5, 4 to 2 decimal places times 10 to exponent minus 12 very small concentration mole times decimeter cubed okay always show the SI unit for the final answer I mean this question is given as three marks but I feel like it was supposed to be at least four marks or five even because to know this relationship and to do this but I guess they don't care. So you get a mark for that correct formula. And you get a mark for this substitution because it was critical. And then the answer. Okay. So this is how you score those three marks. Okay. Hope that was clear, guys. Otherwise, um, we don't want to stall this business over here. All right. So let's have a look. What is the story now? Tendai chose phenolphthalein as the indicator for this titration. Okay. All right. Um, phenolphthalein changes color at a pH of approximately 9. Write the equation for the hydrolysis of the fluoride ion and briefly explain why this choice of indicator was suitable. Okay. Great stuff. So let's have a look what happens when we hydrolyze what is this question number again 5.1.5 okay so the fluoride ion in solution plus water when we say hydrolysis it's water all right which is a liquid otherwise it goes on to do what Remember, this one will protolyze that ion. Okay, water is a weak acid, so to speak. So we will have here HF, so hydrofluoric acid, plus what remains here is the OH minus ion. So that is the formula for the protolysis of the fluoride ion or hydrolysis of the fluoride ion okay so they are saying now we have to explain why phenolphthalein is used we can say here since the phenol uh, phenolphthalein changes color 
in a basic solution it is therefore an appropriate choice in the above solution as O H minus ions are formed. Okay, not a big deal. I mean, how you put this, it's up to you. You can just say the solution is basic and you stop there. But you're trying to be as comprehensive as possible. Of course, you get a mark and then maybe two marks for your explanation and then again, you walk away with some three marks over there. Hope that is easy to follow. Let's keep moving, guys. Don't have time. Uh, consider the following uh, bases together with their uh, KB values. By the way, it's just the constant, okay, equilibrium constant of a base. As you see with Ka, it's an equilibrium constant of an acid, and Kc, it's a molar concentration in equilibrium, okay? Not a big deal. So ammonia, NH3, its Kb value is 1.8 times 10 to exponent minus 5. That's pretty small, right? Because we know that appreciable range is 0, 0. Uh, you know what? This thing always troubles me, man. It always troubles me. I'm not too sure if it is like this and then 1000. But maybe 001. Not too sure. I forget this one all the time. But this range is already small. It says we're lying far to the left. And if that is the case, then we are forming less ionic substance or less ions from this than we actually break it down so pyridine is also having a much smaller uh, kb value than ammonia then the carbonate ion has a much bigger than this but still small as well okay now it says of these of the three bases listed which one is the strongest Obviously, it's the carbonate ion. So, is the carbonate ion. All right. Not a problem. Easy. And then it says, define a base in terms of the Laura Brunstad model. Okay. We know that it is A proton acceptor. Okay, it accepts protons. Now define a weak base. So we know that a weak base is a substance, maybe not say a substance, but we can say it's a basic substance. or an alkaline substance that dissociates incompletely in water. Okay, not a problem. So, a weak base is a basic substance, so you can say it's an alkaline substance that dissociates incompletely in water. Okay, not a problem. Write a balanced chemical equation for the ionization of ammonia in water. Okay, so ammonia is... Something is just not right there. Come on, pen, don't mess with me now. NH3. Okay plus H2O. So what would be the story? 
water will protolize this one as well okay so what we're going but don't show the arrows of course it's just me trying to direct you as to what is to be expected but I mean you already know this so we get NH4 plus okay plus OH minus okay so do you see the one way we can see this is a base is because we can see that it liberates the hydroxide ion which is a strong base so that is all that they wanted from us and I think it's balanced so there's nothing to worry about so we get our three marks and that is how those 20 easy marks could be attained okay I don't know why some things are trying to fall here just trying to irritate me actually because I don't know why they want to do so okay um, let us see if I have enough pages here to work on so uh, this is how the acids and bases can be asked I think this was rather easy you know that there's that hard hitting question in some of the questions but uh, let's not get there we are on the revision mood we don't want to complicate our lives at all so question six quickly Ufezile sets up the galvanic cell shown below using a golf sorry gold hmm, what an expensive thing they gold half cell and a half cell of unknown identity x under standard conditions and you should know what standard conditions are okay great Ophezile notes that solid gold metal deposits on the gold electrode so obviously if then gold deposits here we know we are undergoing reduction so this must be our cathode okay and therefore this one is our anode okay of course where cathode is a reduction takes place where the anode is oxidation takes place and we were told this is a galvanic cell so this is a spontaneous reaction so this is chemical energy creating uh, what we call uh, electrical energy okay now the question says define electrolyte oops what is an ele what is an electrolyte okay it is it is a solution of an ionic substance that is able to conduct electricity okay I mean the words are not really an issue but keywords are most important idea is there's ions in the solution and it, it is able to conduct solution I mean electricity so how you put the other words together it's totally up to you but please ensure that keywords like there's ions okay you can say it's a solution made up of ions and such that it's able to conduct electricity or you can say it's a solution of an ionic substance that is able to conduct electricity easy write the formula of a substance sorry of a suitable electrolyte that could be used in the silver well easiest and safest you can say he, not silver eh, I like silver eh? gold man so we can have here a u remember it's three plus so whatever we're going to do we can say a u n o three but we need to multiply that by three right 
because NO3 is 1 minus and this is 3 plus so to balance that so why am I choosing a nitrate so we know that all nitrates okay maybe let's say most most nitrates are soluble in water okay so most nitrate salts will be soluble in water of course you have options here silver chloride could also be used you can also think of silver sulfate sorry why do I like to say silver hey come on man this is gold okay we can use uh, gold sulfate but remember certain sulfates are not soluble in water so you don't want something like that that is just going to form a precipitate and therefore defeats the purpose of this um, experiment or this uh, setup okay so the best is just choose nitrates when you can because you know that some metal chlorides like silver chloride form a precipitate so it's a nightmare and others uh, like uh, silver sulfate think so it also forms some kind of a precipitate that hmm, does not really serve the purpose if you are to set up this electrochemical cell anyway silver nitrate should be the best option not silver nitrate but gold nitrate I don't know why I keep saying silver I'm so used to it which electrode X or AU is the anode well we discovered that it is going to be our electrode X write an equation for the reduction half reaction a reduction half reaction now we can see that well this guy needs three electrons to be reduced to just silver solid okay so in any case we're going to say this is going to be the AU three plus ions plus three electrons going to AU solid and then of course this is AQ which is aqueous solution okay easy stuff again you can come here on the standard electrode potentials and then you'll see there that that is the AU so it's AU 3 plus plus 3 electrons to just AU okay not a problem easy stuff take it to marks and you smile now the initial reading of the voltmeter is 1,82 volts perform a calculation to determine the identity of x okay not a problem you can do that quickly uh, 6.1.5 so we know that well the e cell is given by the e of the cathode minus the electrode potential of the anode okay great so this implies that 1,28 sorry 82 is equal to now what is that one for silver uh, I mean not silver but gold hey man plus 1,42 minus X we we'll just put X in there now if we want to do this properly we transpose X to the other side and uh, we'll transpose this one to this side okay let's just do that easy calculation I mean this one is like simple arithmetic 1 comma 4 2 minus 1 comma 8 2 uh, this is minus 0, 0,40 to two decimal places volts. Okay, easy stuff. Therefore, x is now. Let's identify x by using that electrode potential. Um, where is 0, 0,40? There it is. But this is a plus. We want a minus. Remember that one is negative. Okay. So there it's minus 0, 0,40. No, 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 0, 0,4, not 0, 0,04. OK, 
Okay, that is uh, this is cadmium CD. Okay, so it is CD. Let's just use CD. But if you want to write the name, is cadmium something like that. Okay, anyway, not a problem. Let's see. Despite the large EMF. It is not profitable to produce again once you hear profits talking about money to produce this cell for use in a commercial battery suggest one reason I mean this is pretty easy gold is expensive or pricing okay quite a priced uh, commodity okay Ufezile wants to use a standard hydrogen Standard hydrogen electrode. Some people call it the Xi electrode. Okay. To determine the standard electrode potential of the AU half cell. Okay. Now describe the standard hydrogen electrode and briefly explain its role as the reference electrode. Okay, this is easy. Yeah, you don't have to really sweat that much. Let's see. This is 6.6.1. Uh, hmm. So we know that the Xi electrode, oh, it's a Xi situation, half cell. Yeah, it's a Xi half cell, not electrode. Yeah, so we know that it uses what? Standard conditions. Conditions. Okay, which are, we know that the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius or 298 uh, Kelvins. We know that the pressure, because it involves hydrogen, pressure is one atmospheric pressure. I don't remember that number of Pascals and stuff. So don't ask me, just go and check in the back of your information sheet, it's there. And then what else? Concentration of an electrolyte must be one mole per decimeter cubed. Is there anything else? Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much what the standard conditions are. All right. Um, now, what else do we need? Yeah, because this is a gas, hydrogen is a gas, we need a platinum electrode. Okay, so that we can have uh, the anode there. Right, right. Uh, is there anything else I am forgetting? Uh, maybe a solution of hydro hydrogen ions. Okay, we need a solution of hydrogen ions. So that this thing can happen, okay. Uh, now, I'm trying to think, did I say H plus ions? I don't think that's correct because hydrogen here has to be uh, It has to be oxidized, isn't it? Yeah, but anyway, that solution will have hydrogen plus ions. Yeah, not a problem. Um, now, how do we explain this thing? So this, the she half cell has a known electrode potential of zero comma zero zero volts and so is used as a reference electrode potential to determine 
are the half cell potentials. Okay, I know my writing is 100% bad, but yeah, whatever. So we know that the Xi half cell has a known electrode potential of 0, 0, 0,00 volts. And so it is used as a reference electrode to determine or to measure other half cell potentials. I think that is the best thing you can say there. Okay. So as you can see, there's four points here. There's standard electrode potentials stating the fact that we need um, a platinum electrode and then that we need a solution of hydrogen plus ion. And then to explain how this works, I think this is how we can crack that four marks. Okay, quickly the last one. It says now write the half cell, sorry, write the cell notation. Okay, for the cell that Ufezile would use to determine the standard electrode potential for the gold half cell, include phase indicators. Okay, so we are not to cut corners here. Okay, so 6.6.2. .6 what is the story there? The story is we're starting with the hydrogen. So we always do this one, platinum. This is solid because they said we must include them in the Kados. So we have H2 gas. Okay, going into H plus ions. Then we'll have our salt bridge over there. Then we have AU3 plus aqueous solution going into just AU solid. Okay, so that is it. So this is how we get our four marks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so I think the mark is for the salt bridge, number one. And um, that platinum electrode is quite cool. And then this guy here as a whole, meaning hydrogen to hydrogen ions. And then that guy as a whole from gold to gold ion, sorry, to gold solid. So perhaps this is how that four marks comes about. Again, another easy 20 marks that you can get if ever the question is asked in this manner. I mean, the redox reactions are the easiest, guys, so please do not find any reason to lose marks when it comes to them. Okay. So, let's keep moving. Let's do our last question for now, for today. Uh, question 7. Consider the two electrolytic cells, okay? A and B, okay? Shown in the diagrams below. Electrodes P, Q, and R are made of graphite, okay? We know that this guy is pretty resistant. It has a high melting point and it is chemically inert, so it does not interfere with our, elect I mean, with our chemical reactions there, but it is a very good conductor of electricity, which is what we need from it, okay? And Electrode S is made of copper, okay? They're already telling us that electrode S is copper. Not a problem. Now, the electrolyte in cell A is molten copper 2 chloride. Again, what is that stock notation, right? What is the significance? It tells us the oxidation number that copper takes is the 2 plus. Then, of course, if you know the oxidation of that one, also chloride, it tells you that you're going to have Cl2- minus because it has to balance that. Okay, and the electrolyte in cell B is concentrated aqueous copper 2. Again, same stock notation, so it carries a 2 plus. Okay, there is this first one, copper 2 chloride solution is blue. Hmm. Why is it blue? We know that the copper ions actually are responsible for the blue color. And as you would know from uh, doing what? Um, spectrum, is it? Yeah. What is that section called? 
whatever I mean, emission and uh, absorption spectra so you know that when you burn copper and then you put that triangular prism you will see some bluish flame in fact it gives you a blue flame right and then when you put it under that prism then you can see some you know frequencies of visible light there so let's not complicate it otherwise so just giving a little bit of an integration because these sections are not really separate it's just that to make work easy they are separated but at times you'll find integration so be always aware of such things sometimes you may find a question here that is related to spectra purely because it is relevant for an for a substance or for an element that is in use here okay so always think about it but don't sit too much onto it as well all right there it is so we have our half cells so by the way once you have the signs like that so we know that that becomes the anode that becomes the cathode in an electrolytic cell right same story over there i'm not going to go into it okay question says um one of the reasons graphite is suitable material for the electrodes in cell a is that it has a very high melting point yes definitely that's why you can use it in molten stuff which is pretty hot now it says why is it important for graphite to have a high melting point in a you can just say the cell operates operates at high temperatures course this is due to the molten because if you melt this then that means it's hot okay so we can just simply say that, that the cell operates at high temperature due to molten copper to chloride okay this is molten copper to chloride. I don't know why it looks like that. Eesh, this thing, man. My hand is forever super fast. Okay, let's do. Provide two other reasons why graphite is a suitable material for electrodes in cell A. Okay, it is chemically inert. So meaning it doesn't take part in the reaction, which we need it to be so, to it conducts electricity. Okay, great stuff. There you are. What energy conversion occurs in an electrolytic cell? So it's electrical to chemical. Okay, the opposite of a galvanic cell okay great stuff so do you see so many marks man you already have five marks that is a giveaway okay briefly explain why copper to chloride must be in either molten or aqueous state okay we need free ions you can just say only freely moving ions are able to conduct electricity as you would know that when you did some experiments of trying to check uh, whether the solid forms of these ionic substances can actually conduct electricity and you know very well that when you put that salt grain, you put some crocodile clips there, negative and positive, there was no current in the ammeter or the, the light bulb never went on. But as soon as you dissolve that into solution and then you put electrodes, then there was all of a sudden a current in the ammeter and of course a light bulb goes on. So, but once it is 
molten or it is in either solution then we know that those ions are free to move because when they are tightly bound in the ionic, in the ionic lattice they don't conduct electricity because they are fixed in their positions but here they are not okay consider cell A uh, identify the cathode in cell A okay great cathode is Q That is the one, right? Because we said the negative terminal connects to the cathode. Okay, great. Now write an equation for the half reaction occurring at electrode P. This is oxidation, and we know oxidation is going to be the chloride ions. It's a so two Cl minus ions will be oxidized to chlorine, which is Cl2 gas. Okay, the greenish gas. So we know that, okay, greatly, uh, that is what is going to be taking place there. Because, I mean, this becomes positively charged, so it will attract the negatively charged ions there. All right, not a problem. So we have here two Cl minus going to Cl2 gas plus two electrons. So this is oxidation half reaction. Again, if you forget this one, you have your tool over there. Let's see. Oh, by the way, this one is a bit funny. So there is chlorine. So it's coming from the right to the left, okay? So that is oxidation. If you're looking at that direction, okay? Great stuff. Two marks, easy there. Write an equation for the half reaction occurring at Q. Hmm. Well, we know here that fine, the copper here, because remember this is negatively charged, so a positively charged um, ion will be attached there to form copper solid, okay? That is undergoing reduction. So we will have here Cu2 plus that is aqueous solution plus two electrons going to copper solid, okay? Again, if you forget this one, come here and to look for that. Uh, there it is. So this one, we're reading it from right, I mean from left to right. So that is a reduction half reaction. Okay, great stuff. And then it says, um, identify the reducing agent in cell A. Okay. What is the reducing agent in cell A? It is the uh, Cl2 minus, 2 Cl minus. But you can just say the chloride ions, but let's just write 2 Cl minus ions. Because the reducing agent, as you can see here, the right hand side is all about the reducing agents. The left hand side is all about the oxidizing agents. So the reducing agent is the 2Cl minus basically here. Yeah. Okay. Or you can just say the chloride ions. Doesn't really matter. Great stuff. So easy marks for me. Like I said, the electrochemistry is the easiest part of chemistry. No need to mess up here. And in fact, if you study this well, you will be able to master all the other sections even. Okay, what observation or observations will be made in the electrolyte solution around electrode S during uh, the operation of cell B after a significant amount of time has passed? Give a reason, sorry, give a half reaction to support your answer. Okay, let's have a look at it once more. What is in here? Great. We know that fine, the copper ions, again, because this is negative, so copper will be here. Now, remember, if copper gets reduced, so what happens to this solution here, especially? Because these are the immediate ions that are going to be abutting onto this electrode here. So we know that these are blue, so once they get in here, then we'll start to see this blue color fading, especially in this region. Okay, 
So that is the story of uh, the. So greatly we can say the blue color of the solution fades away. Okay. Ah, you can just say fades or fades away. Yeah, ne? away to where. <laughs> it just fades away. And the reason is because copper is being reduced. So 2 plus AQ plus 2 electrons to see you solid. Okay. You don't really need the phases per se. But the idea is that copper is being reduced. And once you reduce it, it becomes bl it's brown when it's in solid form. But in ionic form, it gives us that blue color of the solution. Now, at which electrode will again, at which electrodes eh, will again in mass be observed? Of course, in cell A, we know that it is going to be electrode Q and electrode S in cell B, right? Because if you're looking at Q, it's a reduction, so there's going to be an increase in the mass, and there's going to be an increase in the mass there also. Okay, so Q and S, two marks. Again, see how easy these things are. Now, Andrew suggests a little concentrated sulfuric acid to be added to the electrolyte solution in cell B, okay, uh, to improve conductivity. I mean, this is just to conduct electricity more efficiently, okay. What effect would a higher conductivity in cell B? What effect would a higher conductivity have in cell B? Okay, so basically, what do we know is going to happen here? Already we have ions here. So if we add sulfuric acid, we're going to add H plus ions plus the sulfate ions. Okay, so sulfuric acid will dissociate completely into those ions. So that means the total number of ions in the solution is going to increase. And that is why the conductivity is also increasing. So, what we know is that the reaction will proceed much faster. Okay, you can say the reaction rate will proceed much quicker. Can say faster, yeah. I don't know what I'm writing there now, yeah. Whatever, man. Whatever you heard, what I said, don't worry about what you are seeing, okay? The reaction rate will proceed much faster, and you know, most that there are five factors that uh, affect the reaction rate. See, concentration. So, if we're increasing the number of ions, then we know we know that we are going to increase the concentration of the ions, and therefore, this reaction will proceed much faster. Now define ionization. What is ionization? We can simply say it is a dissociation, dissociation of an ionic substance into its respective ions when in solution okay ya ba fwet hi le tlantswarela ke likile ho kwala sentle empa ha o gona hale ai 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 hlolekile mnango Okay, so ionization is basically a dissociation of an ionic substance into its respective ions uh, when in a solution. I think that is the best way I can put it. Now explain why this addition of sulfuric acid would improve the conductivity of the solution. Okay, you see that there is an increase in the ions. And... The solution, as you can see here, that an ionic substance only conducts electricity when it is in solution. 
that means the ions are free okay because in solid form it does not because the ions are bound tightly and fixed okay so we could see that the sulfuric acid is a strong acid it dissociates complete completely so there's more negative and positive ions and therefore the conductivity will increase okay great so there's an increase in ions in the solution okay now if too much sulfuric acid is added HCl gas will be produced and escape from the solution okay this is the equation of how it will happen now how would this affect the likelihood of water being oxidized at electrode R state increase decrease or no effect of course something has to go there and be oxidized as you can see here water can actually undergo oxidation where is it let's have a look see um, there it is strange enough uh, but is this the right one hydrogen peroxide mm -mm. why do I feel like I'm being punked now where is the water molecule eh? this thing doesn't have water there it is yeah boo. this one was incorrect because it goes to hydrogen peroxide so no there it is so this one here you can see water can undergo oxidation to release ion uh, hydrogen ions and oxygen so yes uh, something will have to be pulled into that negative electrode because for that cell to be in operation something has to undergo oxidation so the likelihood of oxidizing water there will increase because we are losing the chloride ions which would initially be the ones undergoing oxidation all right guys that's how you get your 25 marks and you can see here these are simple questions so even answers are very short so there's no need to panic when you get to this section but make sure you understand it and make sure you master it because as easy as it looks there are is i mean there are some errors that can take you down all right guys hope you liked the video and of course keep sharing the videos with as many people as you possibly can so that uh, all of this hard work here can be spread and as many people can you know share the spoils of what it would bring in terms of the results all right guys uh, bye bye for now see you in the next video when we finish up this paper